this is a nice short presentation, but feel free to put your questions in the question panel as we go along, or we'll have time to address them at the end. So I'll go ahead and get started, though. Hello, everyone. We are going to speak about applications on smartwatches, controlling some devices run on squad at Mopoi. My name is Ileide Campos. I am MVP Brocadillo Brazil, a controlling and automation engineer, post graduating data science analytics, and developer team here. Victor Fernandes is, is MVP Brocadillo Brazil 2, MSC engineer, and CTO at TKS Software. So let's start. Around 2017, when I heard about IoT, all things were focused to control it by desktop or manually on device. And the best known category of IoT was smart home, with examples of products like lamps, smart thermostates, access control, and people know more and more about vacuum cleaner robots, irrigation, mm -hmm. energy control, cameras, etc. And today, Devices are controlled by smartphones, and in the beginning people say that the controller is on the palm and looks like it's good enough, but new, smaller, faster, and new technology devices appear every day. Your times are right, then it? But the possibilities are increasing every day. Smartwatches are getting popular, and more and more that controllers are on the watch. My squad at Mobvoi, there is a, a Wear OS by Google, the Snapdragon 2100 processor with 512 MB RAM memory and 4 GB ROM memory. There is a IP68 certification against dust and drops of water, battery with 415 mAh, less than 30 days, NFC payments, dual display, an AMOLED colorful and other LTD, Bluetooth Classic, lower energy and Wi-Fi communication. USB charge data, and in some specific models, there are possibilities for 4G technology and GPS. And in my case, my watch isn't fast because there is just a 512 megabyte RAM memory and a 2100 processor. And the system hangs sometimes, and we'll show it later. In, in the latest version, there is a, a Snapdragon 4100 quad core with 1.7 GHz and 1 GB ROM memory, and according to reviews, it is really, really fast. We have been programmed for Android with Firemark and easily and fastly, and with the VRS it is different, okay? VRS is a version of Google Android operation system, but designed for smartwatches and other wearables. We can program them similar we do with Android smartphones. For example, I compile the same maps applications for smartphone that I showed on Barcadero Conference Brazil last year, change just the layout to show a component because of the similar design. But we can compile some applications to smartwatch with a change line of code. So it means it's more open to developers. Six reasons to develop various applications. The first and best reason is making Delphi, of course. To get to Delphi, whereas based in Android is a powerful alley which allows us to run the WBK extensions on the smartwatch. The hardware is getting better every single day, and it can execute many tasks by itself. Other chance is there are few applications of the store, applications dedicated and independent. Five reason is many famous brand watches have been produced in intelligent watch. To smartwatch, Mobvoi, Fossil, Casio, for example, and Samsung that come back to use Wear OS after starting a partnership with Google. They explain the title Wear OS is powered by Samsung, with Samsung helping build up. And the chart on top for me is the independence and utility that brings real functionality for the applications. The smartwatch is a power for a smartphone, or could be, mine isn't yet. So, that applications must be the same, you know, and not totally dependent on the smartphones. Using Spotify on a smartwatch, for example, I don't need to install it on my smartphone. And I can view playlists, choose and download songs, etc. That in the past, it wasn't possible. Applications idea to develop your OS. Maps applications, monitoring, habit, GPS, telemeter, uh, fitness tips, 
the stability is a good idea, games control, and the less and no less important, IoT, Internet of Things. Let's play. So in case this is your first time, this is your first time using the watch uh, and you can try a very simple application, actually a no code application, just uh, to show you guys, there's actually no code in this application. Uh, what we did, we actually got the QR code for the official link in the Brazilian government showing that uh, we are vaccinated and we upload this application, this as an application to the watch. So when we are going through the airport or whatever, mm -hmm. we just open the application in the watch and uh, we show it to whatever device, for example, in the airport that needs to check if you're vaccinated, then it will uh, bring the official link from the government. So now we have uh, well, um, an application that uses Google Maps API and uh, we are going to show you guys how we select the application on the watch. So after we upload we have the, the list and then we see the FireMonkey logo loading the application on the watch. As you can see it takes time because uh, we don't have, uh, it's not that fast this model and then we have the same interface we see there on Delphi we see here on the watch and uh, this application uh, is for Google Maps so we give an address a destination and uh, we ask it to show the map it show us possible routes we can select one of the routes It takes time to load, you see. But yes, it works. And then uh, we can see the route from here to actually the neighborhood where my office is. And uh, we see that we can actually go through all the maps. So maybe if you're uh, driving your car or even a motorcycle, you could be wearing the watch and having uh, Google Maps application uh, showing you the route and then you can uh, in this model we don't have GPS attached but of course if you do have then you can use it or you can integrate these to the your phone uh, GPS inside your pocket and have another application there. okay so this is uh, Delphi very simple application So now we have here the application running inside the Rad Studio. The project is open. And uh, in our project, we have this connect button. Can we show the code? So very simple code. Uh, we have two lines of code of Bluetooth Low Energy just to discover the devices. And uh, once we upload the application to the watch, We here have the application running now. We see the, the, the logo of the Fire Monkey. And here we have the same button. We can click to connect. And then uh, once we click connect, it will connect to our device, which is here, Bluetooth Low Energy. It will list all the devices and uh, we are now able to control it. So once I hit on, it starts blinking and beeping. And I can now hit off and on and again to control my, my device. So we have now Delphi application running inside a smartwatch to control uh, never lose your key. Bluetooth low energy device.
So now we have a more complex application with uh, many features that we want to show you guys. And uh, we are going to try to do this video in one shot and uh, demonstrate the application which is uh, already running here on the watch. And first uh, option we have here is Office. So we are going to control the Office light. Please uh, just uh, light it up. And uh, as you can see now, it's, uh, it is dark. This lady is going to change it now again. And uh, the light is turning on and off. And this is possible only because we have an ESP32 here inside. And uh, now turn it on and off again. It's late. You see? So it's going darker. And uh, now we have a second option, which is to control the desk light. And uh, this is now the light that's going to light up. And uh, this is being done through this sun off device, which is relay based. And uh, we can control whatever device up to 10 amperes. And uh, now she's going to control the light on and off. Okay, we are now, oh, she's now turning on and off this pyramid here. As you can see, it's totally standalone. We have a power bank and another ESP running here inside. This is all being done via Wi-Fi. So whenever she's there clicking, click the LED again, then we have it going on and off. And uh, now we can uh, click another option, which is send nudes. We have this uh, joke here. We have this uh, little camera here and uh, so lady is going to, to pose for the picture. So now we can see that via Telegram, you see here we have the Telegram web application and that's my finger pointing to the camera, okay? So whenever we hit here, send nudes, click again. This camera takes a picture and there is an application running in this ESP connected to the API of Telegram and the new picture is sent to Telegram. And here we have uh, actually the, the web version. No? Fantastic. And last option we have here is to control the sound. We can put the sound on, on another device. How is it this one called? I forgot the name. And price tag. In, yes, but uh, yes, it's a M5 stack. Yes, I forgot the name. Actually, I got one from Jim too. So Jim uh, gave all the MVPs one of those, and uh, Slade integrated this with a radio and uh, MP3 player, so we can uh, actually listen to some music directly controlled from the watch. So she's changing the music. So she lowered the volume and now she's changing the, the music. Change again, put it higher, put the volume higher. Let's play some music. Okay, now we can change the radio. We hit the mode button. And then we have local radio in Brazil, okay? So this is a little bit of what we can do. And uh, we all invite you guys to check on this application uh, source, which is available on uh, GitHub. We're going to give you guys the link. So go there and check how easy it is to do it with Hard Studio Delphi. There are possibilities to change the layout, the view, according to the device model. And it's possible for the Marwati too. This is a model for Sony Smartwatch 3 and it is not a good view of my application to my smartwatch. This is a good view of my application because of the similar design, but it isn't perfect yet. The best way is create a new one for my smartwatch. And this 
it is how it looks on my smartwatch. That's all, guys. Thanks for your attention and see you all next time. All right, fantastic. Uh, this was this was cool. I definitely want to check out the source code and love that you showed the um, how to adjust the format for the different watch faces, different sizes, and different shapes and such. There was a, a comment here about the why there's no Delphi support for Apple Watch yet. Uh, the reason is, and I, I, I commented here on this, but the Apple doesn't, um, Apple requires that your app that you submit is in a undefined bytecode format. And so while it is possible to reverse engineer what that bytecode format might me, be, it is not, um, it's subject to change. So it just makes it really difficult, unfortunately. So you could technically, uh, from my understanding is you can actually compile for iOS and deploy it to the watch, but you can't go into the app store because the Apple requires it to be in this undefined bytecode format. So it makes it uh, unnecessarily complicated, unfortunately. <laughs> Okay, uh, if there are any other questions about this, actually, can you guys put the link in for the uh, the uh, GitHub? That would be great if you put that in the chat, because I want to check this out as well. <laughs> Lady, do you have the link? And does the GitHub include the um, ESP32? code as well or is it just the Delphi code? Yes, both the the code of Delph and the SP. SP. Great. If you can put that in the chat and we'll also put the uh the code available download on the the page Delphicon page for this session too so you can grab it there. Okay. So uh, the, did you put the ESP32 in your light switch yourself or was that some sort of a pre-made thing that you purchased? In the wall, you mean, Jim? Yes, in the wall on the light switch, yes. Yes, uh, she put it herself. <laughs> She's an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, I love it. <laughs> so I did see, I'm guessing there was a relay then that the ESP32 control to turn the lights on and off because the lights are going to yeah, be on mains voltage. For all those, uh, for all those applications running at uh, 110 volts or 220, we are always doing it uh, relay based. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The easiest way is to check this on off uh, devices. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if it's easy for everybody to buy it worldwide, but for sure you can find some. Um, some supplier near to you. And uh, they are, let's say, already embedded everything together, like the Wi-Fi device and the, and the relay uh, connections. So it makes it very easy for you. And actually in the in the video, if the later whoever goes to check the video online, they can stop there, check for the model and uh, search online for this uh, Sonoff device, or maybe even Slade, you can send us here a link to buy them for people to check. And uh, it's very Sonoff easy. Device? You connect on the on ether, Ethernet, and then you just uh, activate a, a simple bit. Excellent, I'll have to check that out then. Yes, but, but there are other devices like that, other, other manufacturers or other suppliers. Just uh, this one she's using, it's very nice too. I have used uh, different models in the past. What was the model of smartwatch you're using too? It's the, the TicWatch Pro. It's two, two verts, second vert. Um, someone, so uh, Rolf saying the Sonoff is available in Germany. Um, and then someone's asking, is the ten Techno watch, if that will work? I'm not sure if you use that.
No, we only tried with this uh, version. But okay. as long as using uh, Android, uh, we see no problem. And were you using any third-party components with this, or was it just using the Android support and Bluetooth support that comes with Delphi? Everything 100% Delphi native, no, no third parties. The idea here was actually to, to show everybody how easy it was to actually develop some nice ideas, both uh, for the watch itself and uh, using IoT, integrating with IoT. So, I mean, um, pushing a little bit the boundaries of uh, the usage of the watch itself and showing that uh, Delphi is ready to support the, uh, the ideas that they might have and uh, actually create some very cool applications. I, so can you put the link in for the, um, uh, the watch or the, 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 the name and the model of the watch as well, just so? I just put the name in the chat. Tick okay, watch great. Pro. But actually, just a second. Um, I found a link here in Brazil. Uh, there is a link on Amazon, maybe it would be nice. I put the link that quote on such. Fantastic, thank you. Yes, uh, just the same link I just posted. Yes. <laughs> Um, on Amazon, it's about uh, three hundred dollars or something. Oh, really? Are there many different? Um, or, or, or you said you only tested on this one watch. I know, actually, I tested on a few few watches in the past, but that was a few years ago when they first we first rolled out support for that. Do you know if there's anything to watch out for when it comes to uh, finding a compatible watch? Would you like to go for this one, Can I respond there? Você está me escutando? Não, estou te escutando. Você prefere responder essa ou quer que eu responda? Pode responder. Ok. So, uh, well, uh, when uh, she first started to actually develop for the watches, actually the the amount of memory and the, the capacity of the processor were actually the, the barriers there. Sometimes for some applications, we would feel that uh, the performance was not the best. So actually during the, her presentation, she was uh, telling that she did not buy the, the best model available in the market at the time and that she regrets because uh, at some point uh, she was feeling that a little bit more memory would help. So. I mean, uh, it's like buying a, a notebook. If you could always buy the best one, uh, the better, but not always uh, your money, the money in your pocket can follow it. So, yes, of course. Sure. Wow, I'm looking at these tick watch on uh, Amazon. It, it doesn't look like a smartwatch. <laughs> That's uh, really cool looking. I have uh, been wanting to get a new smartwatch for a while. Actually, it was not that much expensive uh, considering other models and uh, it was performing very well. So uh, good enough for most of applications that uh, you can use. So James is saying that he would love to see a follow-up session on accelerometer. Um, what kind of sensors do most of these watches have in them? I know they usually have a GPS and NFC, but do they have they have accelerometers and stuff like that too? Yes, of course, you have access to all those. That's fantastic. Yeah, it should maybe just work. Maybe Simulate mm -hmm. can come up with a series of uh, small apps uh, in the future, just showing feature by feature and how to use Delphi to connect on, on all those features. But uh, basically it is like connecting to whatever what other, whatever other app you have already developed for those sensors uh, on uh, your mobile. The thing is that using Delphi makes the, the standard components, let's say, makes everything like uh, very clear because um, behind, uh, in between uh, Delphi application and the watch hardware itself, there is Android 
And uh, for you, if you're developing with Delphi, for you, it's kind of the same, let's say. Yeah, yeah, that was my experience when I was doing this originally is that it just, um, it just worked <laughs> a little bit smaller. Part of this is act, exactly, despite of the fact that it is smaller, it maybe has uh, less processing power. It doesn't make any difference if you're developing an application for a mobile or for a watch. That's the point. All right, fantastic. Um, very cool. I've definitely uh, already gone out and looked at your GitHub page and I'll be checking that out because uh, this is cool stuff. <laughs> Yes, you did uh, this presentation in Brazil, and I said, uh, no, 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 you must uh, show this uh, to Jim, and because I know he will love it. And for Delphi.com, it is, uh, I mean, we have the opportunity to show this not only in Brazil, but for people worldwide. And that's yeah, yeah. We like about it. Very cool. Uh, there was one comment here that says, uh, um, oh, I missed it now. He said, basically, okay, I realized I must have been living under a rock. You, this was done with Delphi? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right here. He says, confirmed I've been living in a cave. Are all these packages that came with Delphi, or do you need a separate library? Yep, all Delphi. Hmm. Oh, do you know anything about Microsoft Band? Is it running Wear OS, or is it a different OS? I don't know. Sorry. I saw some question about people asking about Tizen and the Samsung watches uh, migrating to Tizen instead of Android. Yes, uh, well, uh, I mean, uh, when uh, they decide to use Android, we have, let's say, a, a standard that most people know and can use different uh, software development uh, environments. If they decide to change to Tizen, of course, uh, we will not have support. And, um, well, uh, what can we do? I mean, that's Samsung's decision. Yeah, so, it, it, so yeah. if it's Wear OS, should be fine. But Samsung come back to to use Wear OS on the smartwatches, but I, I don't know about the 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 bands. The watches so, that you you show in, in next year change the sizing yeah. for Wear OS again. Oh, can you put your email addresses in the chat window as well? Um, a couple people want to follow up with you. Yes, of course. So James is saying that uh, he wants to do it on a watch, but doesn't have an existing mobile app. The samples that ship with uh, with Delphi, you should be able to get. Um, make them work with it as well. So like we have a uh, accelerometer examples and stuff like that that you can use to uh um to try this out. So if, if you want to use accelerometer from the smartwatch, just take the accelerometer sample and uh, adjust it for actually here I think I can I uh, let me share my screen. Let's see. It's not showing which screen it's showing here. Hopefully, let's give us a shot and see what happens. <laughs> nope, wrong screen. All right. There you go. You should see my ID now. Yes. So um, actually, apparently I need to install the patch in this version here. Let me go and open the samples. Oh, this is the wrong one. There we go. Mobile device snippets. 
accelerometer. And if you come up here, which you showed this briefly as well, there's a few options available from the, so we have the Moto 360 and we have the Sony smartwatch, which is the rectangular frame. And there is the also Google glass. There it is there, which still kicking around. So you, you just, you, which I find you can find the one that is the closest fit, whether it be the the Moto 360 round or the Sony Smartwatch 3 that's rectangular. If you look in Doc Wiki, there's actually instructions on how to make a, a custom one or a different size yourself if you want to see what it look like in a different layout. It's pretty easy. I've done it before. Um, so you can check that out. Uh, let's see. James is saying, I've been living in a cave too. Um, Patrick saying, this one is funny, a smartwatch on Android 9, like a tiny snap smartphone with a band. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I've seen some of those. It's like, it, and the crazy thing is how fast this stuff uh, changes, right? Is that the technology that is giving you the... Um, or that the performance of the device on your watch might be the same as the performance of the full smartphone a couple of years ago. So, can accelerometer present motion combined with activity levels? I would think so. What do you, anything, what are your thoughts? Well, I'm not sure. You do could, you like so. Two levels, I guess you could get heartbeat or something like that, probably from the from the watch. I'm sure it's possible. <laughs> Did you try to get the heartbeat uh, or something related to it. She did not try it. But yes, most probably yes. I'm not sure if uh, through accelerometer or not. That's what I'm saying. You so saw the so pregas pelos pelos intents, mas direto não consegui. She's saying that não maybe consegui. via intents uh, you can uh, grab the information, but uh, she did not really try it. Yeah. So let me look real quick. There was a. Um, there is a, a thing in uh, Fire Monkey that gives you, that enumerates all the devices within the, I wonder if this is it here, device info. No, that's not it. All right, there's, there is a, uh, there's a, within uh so you can use intent to communicate to other systems within Android. Victory just messaged about that. Or there's also a uh, um, yeah, Bluetooth, um, object. Yeah, yeah or Bluetooth. Yeah, 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 if I was talking to another device. The example then you, on there's Bluetooth another object. Work. I'm sorry, what's that? The, the example of Bluetooth doesn't work in, in SmartWatch. Oh. The example with the Herbet. E aí você usou qual? Então, esse com o Bluetooth não funcionou. Mas que, que tem um exemplo já no, no diretório. Para pegar o batimento cardíaco, você fala? Isso. isso. Tem, ah. Já tem. Anyway, there's, there's one that will give you a list of like all the devices on the phone. Or, the, or on the smartwatch or the phone or whatever. And you can then, it'll like tell you how many cameras you have. And if you have different types of sensors and stuff and then you can uh once you've enumerated that you can then probably find out if you had like for example a a heart rate sensor or something and uh yes she was telling me that she tried, that. Maybe... 
to Access try the, the Bluetooth example to get the heartbeats and uh, the one that comes with Delphi and these example did not work with the Teak Watch Pro version that she has. Interesting. So maybe it may work with the watch if the watch has a band or something, but the, the integrated one did not work. Interesting. Uh, actually, I saw a question, and maybe I missed it in your presentation, but you were wirelessly deploying the debugging to the device, deploying to the device. Is that right? No. No, you were the, you were deploying via the cable, right, Blade? Right. Okay, it was through a cable. Okay. Actually, she in during the presentation she shows these uh, the watches over this uh, little support that she three D printed, and then it uh, it was always there uh, on the side of the computer, the orange part, and uh, you okay. can see the cable going to the computer all the time. But then once okay. you upload, you're free. All right, all right. The same way with the smart, smartphone. Okay, all right. I So my, the um, Moto 360, if I remember correctly, it used induction charging and you had to deploy wirelessly, which worked fine. It was just a little bit slower. All right. Well, thank you. This was a great session. I appreciate you uh, sharing it with everybody here. And uh, like I said, definitely I'll be checking out the source code and uh, playing with this too, because I always, always looking for more devices to connect together and such. And I guess I need to get a new smartwatch. So, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we would like to invite you guys for Embajadero Conference Brazil every year. So. We have the biggest event down here, and uh, we like to show that uh, what comes up there and uh, comes to Delphicon, Delphicon, it's always a pleasure. Yeah. We, uh, pleasure. You, you guys just, you had one, you didn't have one last year, but you, or didn't have a physical event last year, but you had a physical event this year, right? But there was no, no travel? It was not, fiction. It was not physical still, maybe next year. Okay, next year. All right, yeah, they're they're finally letting people travel again, so. I've missed coming down to Brazil. You guys have such a great event. So I'm looking forward to being down there next year. So see you guys next year. See ya. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.